I was talking to my fellow YouTubers about how they use YouTube analytics to decide what topics they pick. This inspired me to look at my YouTube analytics and I needed help. So I decided to do what self-respecting techie does these days. I turned to AI. That's when I discovered Olama, which is an open source app that allows large language models to be run locally on my Mac mini. I thought about using ChatGPT to analyze the data for me, but I decided I didn't want to share this data with them. In this video, I'll share the notes on YouTube analytics, the basics of large language models, and how to get Olama running, and how to analyze YouTube data with Olama using Python. The video is in different chapters, so feel free to switch to different sections. This video is for education purposes and to share my experiences, but I've included all the code in the GitHub link below to help you get the most out of this exciting technology. Let's get going. YouTube Analytics is a tool that helps creators track and understand the performance of their content on the platform. From my analysis, there are three types of analytics that are key. Views, the number of times you, your videos have been watched. It's a basic measure of your content's reach. Watch time, the total amount of time viewers have spent watching your videos. This metric is crucial because YouTube uses it to gauge the popularity and quality of your content, affecting how your videos are recommended to users. Engagement. This includes likes, dislikes, comments, and shares. High engagement rates indicate that viewers are interacting with your content, which can positively influence its visibility on YouTube. By analyzing your channel's data, you can identify successful topics, formats, and strategies to replicate and areas where improvements are needed. This is the goal of the app I'm making. The YouTube Studio Analytics Dashboard is your control center for all analytics data. It's divided into various sections, each focusing on different aspects of your channel's performance performance, such as overview, reach, engagement, audience, and revenue. YouTube allows you to export your analytics data for more detailed analysis. You can download reports as CSV files, which can be opened in spreadsheet software. This is the format I'm going to use in my Python code. To extract, I went to the details analytics page, added the columns I wanted, selected the export current view option and selected the CSV format. Great, now I have the data I want to analyze. Next is what am I going to analyze it with? Large language models like GPT are advanced AI algorithms designed to understand, generate, and interpret human language. They are large because they are trained on vast amounts of text data, enabling them to grasp a wide range of topics, contexts, and language nuances. They can identify trends, patterns, and insights from data that might be difficult or time-consuming for humans to discern. This capability is particularly useful in sentiment analysis, determining the sentiment or emotion tone behind text data, such as analyzing and comments. Text summarization, condensing long documents into concise summaries such as analyzing scripts. Data classification, categorizing text data into predefined classes such as grouping different types of videos based on titles. Performance analysis, analyzing large data sets for patterns such as views, reach, and engagement. In this video, I'm going to focus on performance analysis, but I'm hoping to explore other areas in other videos, so please subscribe. To access this large language model, I'm going to use a platform called Olama. Olama is an open source platform for running, managing, and building applications with large language models. On the Olama library page, you will see a list of all the models that you can use. It's worth going through each model and checking the memory requirements, particularly if you have eight gigabytes of RAM. I'm hoping to do a more detailed analysis of these models in my next video. Let's look at how to install it on Mac OS. To install Olama, download the app and install the app. Run the command Olama run Llama in the terminal. This takes about 15 minutes to install. This will install Llama 2 model, which is the model I'm using to analyze my data. There are many other models you can install that are on the Olama webpage. To install another, you can use the command Llama run in the name of the model. Llama list command shows the list of models that are installed. You can send a test prompt by running the model the same way and then sending a prompt. To exit, you type forward slash buy. If you're finished with your model and want to delete it from your local system, type in Olama RM with the model name at your terminal. You can check Olama is installed and running in the toolbar menu. 
In this step, we'll be writing code to get Alama to analyze the YouTube analytics and provide some analysis. I'm using Python 3.8, which is required to run Alama. I'm using Visual Studio Code to create a Python code, and I'm running it in a virtual environment as my Mac is using Python 3.6, and I didn't want to change it. I have a link below on the instructions I followed to set this environment up. In order to interface Alama with Python, you need to install the Alama Python library. To install Alama Python library, I I use the following command in the Visual Studio terminal. If you don't have Python 3.8 or later, you'll get an error message. Once you have installed it, you can run this test prompt code to see if you can access it. If you get a reply, great, you're ready to get started. If not, a couple of things I checked was making sure Alama app is running and checking my Visual Studio is using Python version 3.8 or later. Next, let's load in the CSV file. I loaded the data using Pandas to create a data frame. To install Pandas, you need to type the following code in the terminal. After that, the following code loads the data file to data frame. I tried various ways of passing the data frame data to the Alama prompt. In the end, I settled to converting each row of data to string and adding it to the prompt. This level of coding was way out my level. So I asked ChatGPT to help me. The ChatGPT prompt I used was create a Python code to take a row on a data frame and convert for each column, use the heading name, and then an equal sign, then the value followed by a comma. Then I created a function to pass the string into my prompt and run it against the model. My initial prompt was the following. As a YouTube expert, analyze the YouTube analytics data and provide commentary on the video performance. I then selected a row to use and passed it to my function. I then ran my code to see if it worked. It worked. Python started spitting out the response from the model. I've played around with the prompt, but I think I need to do a bit more research to improve it. The code is in the GitHub link below if you want to try it out with some sample data that I've provided. Next, let's test out the results of this prompt. The results were quite generic. It pointed out low performing videos and told me to improve titles and thumbnails for each of them. But it did point out three things that was quite useful. It identified a few videos where I didn't put a link to another video. It identified videos that are shared often and classed them as popular because it is being shared. It identified videos that have a high returning viewers and classed it as a popular with my subscribers. These things I didn't know about. So I'm really pleased that it provided that. Sometimes it did seem to make up stuff that sounded plausible, but I didn't actually provide the data for it. Overall, I'm happy. As a first attempt, the responses saved me time looking at the data and helped me get a better understanding of the how the data has impacted the performance of the video. From the initial implementation, I've gone on to make a Python app to display the data and provide a more GPT user interface. I'm hoping to research further into the different models that I could use, how to customize the models, and how to improve my prompts for data analysis. If you're interested in this, please subscribe to get updates and like this video so I know to make more videos like this on this topic. Until next time, keep optimizing and stay practical.